Hello and thanks for joining me for this video. You're about to see a typical 20 minute drive from my home in Red Roof to the outskirts of Truro and then back again. You're going to see how I deal with and plan with a variety of hazards along the way including meet traffic situations, stop junctions, roundabouts, dual carriageways, multi-lane roundabouts, traffic lights and faster rural roads. So here I'm on a road of a 20 mile an hour speed limit. I'm looking well ahead and here I can see a car coming through a gap that isn't big enough for both of us, I'm just holding back. I'm now about to emerge, I can see the van is emerging but I'm happy that I've reached that gap before he has. So looking further ahead, trying to get the best view possible for what is coming up. So I can start to see we've got some parked cars on the left and looking even further up, I've got a vehicle coming through. So I'm slowing down nice and early and it's holding back in a good place, about at least a car length from this next parked car, so it's easy to steer around him. And also I'm positioned well out to the centre to give me a better view. Because I've been stationed for a little bit of time now, I have applied the handbrake and I'm going to check what's behind me and to the side just before pulling out. I'm aiming to leave an open doors width at least of space here as I pass the vehicles and also planning where I could tuck into if I met a car. So I can see here that it's uh, the road gets a little bit narrow um, but because I've committed the gap I'm going to just slow down and allow this car to pass. There isn't really where I could have really tucked into there. Can't really see where the road is bending now so I'm going to go into this gap try and get a better view and as you can see a car is coming. Just holding off see what they do they may give me priority and that now they've decided to come through again I'm just checking to the side of me before I uh, pass leaving an open doors width and I've noticed the junction ahead is a stop junction so I need to make sure the car does come to a complete stop regardless of the traffic situation So as I'm driving along this 30 mile an hour road, I'm scanning for hazards, checking entrances to driveways, junctions, this garage here to see if anything is pulling out. Looking further down the road, notice we've got parked cars which are going to force traffic onto my side of the road, so just being aware of space available. You can see traffic lights, the first set, uh, no one's stood at the crossing so not expecting those to change. Every other set of lights are always expecting them to change on the approach and then if they don't that's a bonus. With these lights here I'm just sort of trying to gather clues to when they may change so after maybe a few vehicles have come from the right I'll start getting the car ready to move again. So now I'm trying to look as far as I can again to the uh, furthest point, looking for any warning signs. I've got one warning of a junction to the right up ahead. And it looks like we have a, a junction coming up, which you can see is a roundabout. We have a directional sign for it. I'll be taking the first exit on this roundabout. I'm checking what's behind me and I'm indicating in good time. And also looking early to the right, looking for the opportunity to go. looking early into the junction go into for any potential hazard like traffic stop, pedestrians crossing the road. We can see we've got roadworks here which is reducing the amount of space we've got and the road surface is pretty poor at the moment so just keeping the, the speed steady. We may expect to see workmen here so just being aware of that. So the next roundabout I'm going to be going straight ahead and that is the second exit. So as we approach roundabouts we need to gather as much information as we can from any signs we see or road markings on the ground. So the sign coming up shows us that the, uh, the road ahead is at 12 o'clock and it is indeed the second exit. 
we've got no road markings here to dictate anything about positioning or lanes but at the moment because of the temporary road layout there is only one lane anyway as I pass through this next roundabout I am aiming to keep well to the left appears to be a nice open roundabout I can see uh, early what's coming from my right here I've spotted uh, everything there I've spotted the car to the left and I've also spotted the uh, change of speed limit up ahead as well so we're coming up to a, a bigger roundabout now it's actually two roundabouts very close together so I'm going to be turning left at the first one and then immediately right at the second roundabout so I'm expecting to, to use this left hand lane to go left and we will see road markings to confirm that I've gathered all the information I needed from the sign then Again, looking early to the right, deciding early whether I'm going to be going or stopping at this one. Also looking very early into the road I'm going into, I can see we've got two lanes, so immediately taking up position in the right lane to turn right at this second roundabout. I'm going to remain in this right hand lane until I pass the exit just before the one I'm going to take, and then I'm going to check it safe and move across. So now I'm going to check that red car at that previous junction is still there and not in my path as I come across. The exit going into looks clear and looking ahead I can see rejoining your carriageway so I'm using this slip road to really build up my speed before joining. The traffic looks quite light, looking ahead for any potential hazards like tractors. The final blind spot check just before joining your carriageway as well. So I'm getting my speed right up to 70 miles an hour, keeping up to date what's behind me, and also checking my following distance to the car in front, which needs to be at least a two second gap. Seen a sign there confirming there's a parking lane around a quarter mile, so looking ahead to see if there's a car in it who may be joining the dual carriageway, and it's clear. I'm always looking to the furthest point I can. Particularly tractors, they're a big hazard when we're at 70 miles an hour. I'm also keeping up to date what's behind me. The traffic still looks pretty light here at the moment. Looking for any new signage, anything that tells me there may be an exit or a junction coming up. from this sign here. Um, we also want to take note of the road number A390 is the uh, exit number we're taking as well. 
because that would be useful to us to help us to determine what lane we're going to be using. So even without any signs or road markings, we expect uh, to be in the right-hand lane as we approach the roundabout. So I'm keeping up signals what's behind me, and I'm looking to, to move across, still be keeping that uh, two-second gap from this car. Got a sign here to confirm that it's Troy at A390 and the road markings on the ground in the right-hand lane. And I'm keeping up to date, looking for any new signs on the approach that may give me more information. And now we have another sign here, which still confirms the right-hand lane, but also the middle lane as well. I'm actually going to choose to use the middle lane, because I feel that will help me get out a bit easier, because I'm further from any traffic from the right. Because I've used the middle lane on the approach, I just simply take up position on the middle lane on the roundabout, just being aware of vehicles next to me who may suddenly change lanes without observing properly. I'm also paying attention to what the lane does. You'll see here, as we pass the third exit into the fourth, the lane I was in, the right-hand lane, became the left-hand lane and the lane to leave. Now that's not won't always be the case at every roundabout, so we're always uh, trying to look ahead to see where our lane is going, because on some roundabouts we may have to change lanes as we exit. So as we approach that roundabout we didn't have any new speed limit sign which tells us it is still national speed limit but the speed limit has changed from 70 to 60 because we have gone from dual carriageway to single carriageway. Still looking very far down the road for any potential hazards, traffic's looking light, I'm a nice distance from the car in front. spotted a junction up there, there's roads to the left and to the right, just keeping an eye on any vehicles wanting to pull out. And we've got obviously the warning sign for the junction we just passed as well. up this road, very little has changed but um, as you're driving there's always things you want to be keeping on, whether it's your speed, what's going on behind you and then scanning for what's next that's going to cause you to change speed or direction, in which case now it is a speed limit sign up there. And what we're trying to achieve here is not to uh, do too much braking because if we come off the accelerator early enough it does um, cause less wear and tear on the vehicle then. got down to 30 miles an hour in good time there. Now there's a roundabout coming up and I'm going to be turning right, it's the third exit. Because it's quite a new road layout they haven't put any signs on the approach so we can't gather, give, gather any information from that. But we are looking for road markings on the ground. I'm going to position right straight away here because I know that um, you'll always need the right hand lane to turn right at the roundabout. Looking at the traffic situation, we can see it's traffic light controlled this time. Now these lights have been on red for some time, so I'm anticipating that they're going to change quite quickly now. I'm also going to try and look ahead to see what this lane does. So I'm staying in this right hand lane. I've got another set of lights, just anticipating they may change. And as we start to come round the roundabout now, I'm looking to see what the lane does. And you can see here, looking ahead, the lane does split, and I need the left-hand part of this lane to continue to my exit. If I stayed in the right-hand lane, that would go back around the roundabout. So I actually haven't had to change lanes here, but I've had to start positioning left straight away so that I end up in the correct part of the lane. So again, that was a little bit different to the previous roundabout, so what we're always trying to do is just 
get that one step ahead and look further around the roundabout so we aren't suddenly caught out and then find ourselves somewhere we're not supposed to be. Traffic lights on green but they may change, just keep an eye on what's behind. Looking for now potential hazards, junctions to the right, things may be pulling out. So I'm just making my sure, sure my speed always allows me to, to stop in any situation. With the uh, pedestrians there, I'm just positioned just very slightly further out to the centre of the road, just to, to protect me and them if something did happen out of the ordinary. Had a speed repeater sign there, so still a 40 mile an hour. We had a, a sign for the, uh, the village name, so that tells us maybe we're coming into a bit of a built up area. So we pass uh, numerous bus stops and bus stop signs that tell, tell us, of course, we are on a bus route, and maybe we might come across um, a bus at some point. Just gave the window a bit of a wash there because uh, with the low sun in the sky um, it's getting a bit harder to, to see out the windscreen. Previously it was hard to tell it was a little bit dirty but with the, uh, the sun shining on it it does uh, highlight that. Tell them I can see, see a nice distance so I'm, I'm doing the maximum speed for the road. I'm happy the conditions allow me to do it. The road is dry at the moment, and I've got a uh, good light here. Okay, so just keeping an eye on the uh, crossroads up ahead, just looking at the junctions left and right, anticipating things may just pull out in front of me. So I'm not going to go too wild at my speed here. Now looking, noting the road is going downhill, so not giving it too much uh, pressure on the accelerator here, just letting gravity do the work, but definitely keep an eye on my speed now because this is typically where it is easy to go over the speed limit. Seen a village um, name sign there, no speed limit change after yet, but anticipating there could be one as we come into a built up area, we do see that now in the distance. So knowing what's behind nice and early and reducing the speed in good time before we reach the side. So now I'm looking at things like parked cars, pedestrians, cyclists. So as the uh, road bends around to the right, um, I can just about uh, see a parked car there. So just making sure my speed allowed me to stop if something was taking up a fair amount of road space there around that corner. But looking ahead, we've got parked vehicles on the left, got one looking at you might emerge, just being careful with that. See the car coming, so planning to hold back in good time there. And I plan my speed just right here so I didn't actually have to fully stop. I'm staying positioned well to the right now to get a better view. And I've got a gap here I can tuck into if I need to see what that car does and I think he will continue through the gap and I right mirror check just as I come out of the gap here keeping the speed steady because we can't see too far ahead just yet so as I'm coming out of this village and not noticing any speed limit signs I'm still keeping my speed at 30 miles an hour There's a junction up there to the left, no one's waiting to emerge. I have noticed the change of speed limit. I need to make sure my speed stays the same until I reach that sign. Checking what's behind me before I do increase my speed. So I'm at the maximum 40 miles an hour, although we've got bends on this road, I'm happy uh, I'm at a speed that allows me to stop within the distance I can see to be clear. If 
that does start to change, I may be looking at reducing my speed. So I had a warning sign there for junctions left and right, so I was scanning both sides to see if anyone was looking like they was going to merge. So just anticipating we might meet one round the corner. So we've got the old few junctions, driveways coming up. We can see a crossroads there, junction to the left and the right, just anticipating that there may be vehicles pulling out. We see you had the mirror there, so when we never see one of those, we're um, looking out for anyone who might be emerging very slowly. So the next roundabout coming up is a bit more simpler. Uh, it only has two exits, the road ahead and the road off to the right. So I'm going to be taking that road ahead, it's the first exit according to that sign. So I'm checking what's behind me and positioning to the left. I am going to indicate left for this one because it is the first exit and it does help to confirm to everyone that I am following that road ahead. I have looked early and I can see there it was all clear to emerge. So we've come across uh, a few different roundabouts, um, one had a set of lights in it, one was a three lane multi lane roundabout, one had uh, two lanes halfway around it, we've had a dual carriageway, we've had single carriageway roads um, and we've had some town driving. So um, this is now approaching the end of this video so I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, the main aim of this bit, video was for you to um, just start to try and think the way um, a more experienced driver does um, and taking that information nice and early and act on it appropriately. These are the things you will be practicing with your uh, driving instructor. Um, if you have got any questions on anything in this video please don't hesitate to um, ask in the question box and don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Thanks for watching.